Hello and welcome to Active Pride Fitness Systems. Thank you for clicking on the video. And this video is all about how to gain muscle strength and just change your body in 2024. I've got over 25 years of experience of training clients as well as training myself for over 35 years. And here is my book, Holistic Health for Proper Geezers, Classy Ladies, Get the Body and Fitness You Want Now. You can get that on uh, Amazon for £6. If you buy my book and you get in touch with me and you can give me the code that's in the book, then I'll design you a free program to help you through 2024. So let's get right into it. So 20 ways in which to gain muscle strength to keep going and to really get what you want from your workout. So please uh, press the bell icon, please subscribe, please share. Uh, once you've watched the video. Uh, so let's get, let's get right into it. So first of all, what's really important is your workout program. If your workout has 25 exercises or 35 exercises in it, and you're new to training, you may be overtraining. Does that make sense? So I use uh, a system where I assess everything to find out what your body's capable of doing. And obviously, if you're watching this video and you're just looking to gain muscle, you may not be able to have that insight how to do this. So what I would say is stick to five exercises. Five exercises in 45 minutes. This way you won't be overdoing it, you won't be underdoing it, and you will get really good change, and really good uh, benefit. Number two is stick to your workouts. So make sure you get into a routine of training four days a week on the same days, but you can change the days around because I know everybody's life is hectic these days and trying to fit in your training sessions it can be quite difficult. But make sure you never train after three o'clock in the daytime because this can jack up cortisol and stop you losing body fat around the stomach because that's where body stores cortisol. If you're looking to uh, reduce body fat and see a six pack, the next top tip is to keep doing it. So find a mentor like myself or a PT or a friend that you can train and trust and train on a regular basis. Never miss a session if you can. I write it down on a calendar so I know that I've trained and I go by how my body feels. So if it's uh, I've done two sessions and I feel really tired, I might rest for three days and train again. I'm always listening to my body, being... Uh, 52 now it's so important for me not to get injured and to keep training at the high velocity that I train at the next one number four is eat either the paleo diet or eat according to your metabolic type now if you eat according to your metabolic type the link in the in their bio if you eat according to your metabolic type your body will lose weight naturally your hormones will balance out and you will feel 100% better. Now with the paleo diet, it only works for certain types of people. If you're a protein sympathetic type, you'll be fine on it. But if you're a carbohydrate type or a mixed type, you won't be fine on it. None of us look the same. None of us move the same. None of us like the same girlfriends. So we shouldn't eat the same. Does that make sense? So with the metabolic typing diet, the reason why I love it so much and I'm a, I get all my clients to eat according to their metabolic type is that it, it doesn't put you just into one group. You're either a protein, mixed or carb. There is 12 other diets, but that's just an, a, you know, an easy overview. So if you're tall and lean, you're probably a carbohydrate type. If you're short and stocky, powerhouse like myself, you're probably a protein type. And if you're a mixture of the two, you're probably a mixed type. Does that make sense? I'll go more into this in another video. If you want me to do one, comment down below. The next one is uh, meal times. Now, I've seen hundreds of clients over the years and they all go, yeah, I eat a lot. I eat three times a day. Now, if you eat three times a day, did you know that prisoners are only allowed to eat three times a day? So it means you're really putting your body into starvation, especially if you want hypertrophy and you want to gain muscle. The only way to gain muscle is to feed your body 
and to break muscle tissue down so it repairs and you get bigger. Does that make sense? So this is why it's so important that you eat every two to three hours. Every time you're hungry, eat. But if you're trying to drop body fat and get leaner, people talk about calorie deficit. I'm not into that. I've never used that with any of my clients in over 25 years. They all lose weight. They all get in shape. They all look better because calorie counting, one, calorie counting is boring. Two, you can't withstand it forever. So you'll go back to your normal eating habits. So with the metabolic typing diet, you eat foods that you're genetically, your body likes. So you won't gain weight even when you stop. Does that make sense? And I'm educating you about the foods that may be toxic to your body compared to foods that are not. So I would say 95% of people are allergic to alcohol. 100% of people are allergic to sugar. Okay, 50% of people are allergic to bread. 85% of people are allergic to dairy. Does that make sense? So when you get these allergens out of the body, the body starts to change, it starts to detoxify, and the body starts to really improve. Now let's talk about water, which is number six. Water is so important. 0 0.33 times your body weight in ounces of water a day is what you need. So if you're like me, just under 15 stone, I'm drinking two litres of water a day, just over. But remember, if you're drinking tea on coffee and stuff like that, that could be added to the water intake. Does that make sense? But obviously it's not pure water to detoxify your body. And the solution to pollution is dilution. So if your body's quite toxic, stinky, smelly, pimply with spots, if you start drinking a lot of water, it will help the body to cleanse itself and to get rid of uh, the toxins that may be in the body. And it will make you look leaner as well. Okay, number seven, sleep. Now this is an individual thing. Some people need eight hours like myself. Some people can get away with four hours. But the way I look at it, unless you've had an adrenal fatigue test done, you won't know whether you're in adrenal fatigue or not and whether you need more sleep or you can get away with less sleep, okay? Some people say that they're night owls, so they're all up all night, and these people, their hormonal profile is different to somebody else. Or they may have very, very low melatonin inside their gut. So you've got melatonin that's made inside the gut wall or the gut area, and then you've got your immune system in the gut area as well. So if you're not sleeping well and you're not waking up fully energised and buzzing and ready to go, then you know you maybe not be getting enough sleep. And remember, your body does its neuro and tissue repair during different sleep cycles. Does that make sense? And if you're not uh, sleeping according your, to the circadian rhythms in your, in your, in your body, then the more chance you've got of not gaining muscle, getting weaker and getting fatter and feeling more tired. So the circadian rhythms are really, really important. Go to bed when the sun goes down, which is a bit hard in the winter, isn't it, at four o'clock, and uh, wake up when the sun comes up. And that means you'll be in your circadian rhythm. Or do you stick to the same time you go to bed every night, every day of the week, even at weekends? Oh, number eight, once you've been got lots of rest, make sure you work out to an intensity of failure with perfect form. So if you're doing bicep curls like that at the end of your set, because you're going to failure, you're really working your uh, lumbar erectors and you're working your lower back and not working your biceps. So you need to make sure that you're going to failure, say on the uh, econcentric phase, coming down that you can't hold the weight yeah or you get to the stage where you come into one rep and you may be moving your body a little bit then you know you need to stop you've hit failure okay so with my clients i take them to failure but only keeping them safely so they don't get an injury 
and in touch wood and in 25 years I've never injured anybody because uh, I know how the body functions and how what to look for when form and technique goes so watch your form watch your technique now you can once you've been training to say like a month then you can incorporate cross training so you could try hit training if you feel good you could try triathlon training or you could do a little circuit in which to get the body to still change. So in the first four to eight weeks, you'll probably change by 100%. Then eight, 12 and 36 weeks later, the change will be much less and the improvement will be much less, depending on whether you got somebody like me, Master Chet, Paul Chet, Practitioner Level 5, designing you a program or whether you're just trying to do it yourself from books or reading articles online or chatting to other trainers or people exercising in the gym. Remember that probably 95% of people that are not highly studied like myself, like six years masters with the Czech Institute and uh, 30, 35 years of workout experience, a lot of them don't know what they're talking about and they'll get it all off the internet and end up giving you disinformation and you'll get injured. 90% of my clients that come to me, come to me because they've got an injury from a trainer or CrossFit or doing something that their body wasn't ready for. Does that make sense? Number 10, hear your body. So if your body, like I said at the beginning, when I'm training, if I'm too tired the next day, I won't train, even if it's a training day. I always listen to my body. The body will always will always give you valuable signals on what to do and what not to do. All right, so uh, number 21, I think it is. No, number 19 is uh, all about uh, cardio training. So when you're doing card cardiovascular training, if you're running or on the cardio trainer for an hour before you work out, then you're working out for an hour. This is completely pointless. You're overtraining, you won't get muscle gain, you won't improve and you'll start getting injury and pain. So try and do your cardio on a separate day if you can. But really Charles Parlequin, strength and conditioning coach and Paul Check, strength and conditioning coach to 250 athletes in 200 different sports says that cardio isn't needed because if you're doing high velocity lifting like high pulls uh, kettlebell presses or you're doing deadlifting or you're doing cable pull cable push or you're doing walking lunges or you're doing farmers walks just take your uh, heart rate when you're doing them exercises and you'll find that your heart rate will be more than normal maybe going a little bit anaerobic depending on which exercise that you're doing so this is why Charles said never do any of these waste of time machine running on the machine or treadmill or or uh, rowing machines now it can be nice as a warm-up to warm your body up but I prefer to use a Swiss ball or use body movement to get my body warm. Does that make sense? So it's an individual thing, but if you want high performance, then really running on a treadmill is pretty pointless because it's a flat surface. Yeah, you can make it go higher or lower, which some people have said to me, but because it's a flat surface, it can cause knee issues, back issues, and uh, you know shin splints and stuff like that, which, this is why I would avoid the cardio. And most gyms now, the, the real modern gyms, the real up-to-date gyms, have taken the cardio out because they realised that people are more educated than ever before and that doing uh, cardio training can be detrimental to your training. Now, if you've got a heart issue, then it will help enhance it, okay? But if you read the book, uh, what's it called? Exercise the Myth, it's written by a cardiologist and he says nobody should ever do any cardio in the gym whatsoever. So that's a quite a controversial book, which I love. I love being controversial, I love being different. So the next thing, uh, 20, is uh, assessments. 
So remember to document what you're doing, which 98% of people, when you see them in the gym, they have no program unless they're working with a trainer, okay? And even the trainers don't even have a documented program for their clients. Now, I give every one of my clients a program and they charge for that and uh, we can progress and see what's happening year on, week in, week out, month on, month in, month out, to see the progression, see you keep improving and see benefiting from what I'm doing. I'm really expensive. I'm 135 up to 200 pounds an hour and that's what you pay for, my knowledge. Next one is flexibility training. Now, flexibility, you could do, you know, when you're at home, get your body warm, come out of the shower, hot shower, and then stretch your body specifically. Or you could go to a yoga class. Or you could uh, buy a book on stretching, buy a Theragun and stretch your body and, you know, help your body become looser. Because you don't want to get chronically tight and then you go and do the deadlift and you rip a hamstring. If you rip a hamstring, that's going to take years to heal okay so do some flexibility work in my programs every single client gets an orthopedic assessment of their body so they know exactly what they need to stretch and what they don't need to stretch many people stretch everything but they ain't got a fucking foggiest whether they should be stretching that muscle whether it's long weak uh tight or facilitated the next one, which is really important, is no alcohol. Remember, if you're drinking alcohol, one, you're setting yourself up for dementia and uh, brain problems as you age. The other thing is, is that the, the science is now saying that alcohol is a total toxin and a total poison to the body. Now, if you like alcohol and you want to have a drink, just make sure you have a fatty food before you drink that alcohol because that will heal the gut and stop your gut becoming leaky. When your gut becomes leaky, all the food particles pass through the portal vein and then they start giving you elbow and knee and neck problems, pain that you're like, they've read this before, but you're drinking like a fish and you're wondering why you're in pain. Remembering that when you come out of the womb, you haven't got an attachment of a vape you haven't got an attachment of a joint and you haven't got an attachment of a glass full of wine or beer. Does that make sense? And if you've got a Budweiser tumour, that will tell me, if you was my client, you know, you've got a real big belly, like a barrel belly, that would make me think, right, you've got a hydrochloric acid issue, you've got a dietary issue, and the muscle in men, the first muscles to go on men as they age is the gluteus maximus and the abdominal wall. So that's why you see lots of guys over 40, I'm 50, 52, with a six pack, walking around with a 29 pack, you know, and going, oh, oh, look at my belly. I've spent years making that belly. What a fucking twat. Look after your health. Because the, the bigger the belly is, the more chances you've got of getting killer diseases like diabetes, heart attack, stroke, and all these other things. And this is why you need to stay lean and strong. Okay, uh, I don't know what number we're on, but you need to set goals. So I think this is, uh, what would this be, 15? Yeah, because there's only 20. So this may be 15. So set goals. Now, when you're setting goals, it's really important for you to write it down. Write it down in the morning. Write it down before you go to bed and visualise what you want. The more you visualise what you want, the more it becomes your reality. You have the subconscious mind and the conscious mind. The subconscious mind is where you download the stuff that you want. The conscious mind is where you think about it and it just goes and it don't happen. But if you download it into your subconscious mind, then the more chance you have of achieving this great goal, okay? Of gaining muscle, getting fitter, getting stronger. Uh, number 16, only lift what you can lift. So I see lots of guys really struggling, form technique goes and they end up getting injured because they're ego training. So don't ego train, go and train and lift what you can lift with good form. This will set you up for life and not get injured. The next one, you've got to push yourself. If you want to gain muscle on the body, you've got to train hard. You can't train like a pussy, be on your phone, 
and then do one set and be back on your phone or talking to your mate or talking to the friends that you know in the gym. I go in the gym just to train. I'm not in there to make friends. If you want to chat to me in the in the uh, chill out area or uh, when I'm in the sauna and all that, that's fine. But when I'm working out, I'm working out. Leave me the fuck alone because I'm trying to gain trying to maintain my muscle being 52 years old. Uh, oh, number 18, take creatine. If you take creatine, there's lots of science. It doesn't make you bald. It won't affect your liver or kidneys unless you've got a liver or kidney issue. Uh, but if you're very healthy and very... Uh, okay, take some supplements. Next one, take fish oils. If you've got high amounts of body fat, uh, taking four or five capsules a day will help drop your body fat. Number 20, don't miss sessions. If you miss a session with me, you lose your money. You get fined, okay? And if you keep missing sessions, you get fired. I don't stand any nonsense with any clients. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on uh, 20, 20 ways to gain muscle at home. And uh, please uh, press the bell icon. Please uh, press there to subscribe. Please share, please follow. And this whole is all documented on my website so you can read it if you don't want to watch the video. Thanks very much. And please purchase my book, Holistic Health. For proper geezers, classy ladies, get the body and fitness you want. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.